I was born to Margaret and Robert Knight in a little area you call Dunbar. That's in Edgecombe County. It's a rural community, farming community. I have many brothers and sisters. In fact, I have three brothers and five sisters. And we were all raised in a real loving family. Uh, a lot of people would say by today's standards that we lived in a poor family, but it really wasn't. Uh, it was rich with love. And because they both tried to provide for us doing the very best that they could, we had to stay out of school every other day to work on the farm, to stay in the house. But the one thing that my mom would say is that excuses are the tools of losers in this life. Those who use them build monuments of nothingness and never succeed. Uh, we first met when she was uh, working at Edgecombe Community College. And I met through a student that was in her class at night. Uh, she said that she was giving them too much homework and needed somebody to date her. So, you know, I, I kind of took up that task. And the rest is history. <laughs> uh, all of my sisters and brothers, and I thank God for that, were able to go to college. And the majority of us went on scholarships. And it's because we did make good grades while we were in school, but it was only because we gave our best every day. And I don't think that we would have done that. In fact, I know that we would not have done that had it not been for my mom and dad and their insistence on that. I've been at many schools, but I believe from my heart that the students here at Williford School, 95% of them are presented with challenges that very few children are presented with. I came to Williford School 25 years ago and um, as a teacher, I was a, a fourth grade teacher, and the challenges have always been there. It's not just, um, you don't just teach what is expected. You've got to um, be sure that um, they're fed. You've got to be sure that um, their clothing is appropriate. You've got to be sure that um, that they're getting the appropriate, the proper nutrition um, to come to school and feel good and stay awake and be alert and, and that the parents are involved. One of the challenges that young children bring at Williford is their baggage from home. A lot of the children come to school worried about their mother because she was beaten up by her boyfriend last night and they're reluctant to leave her because they're afraid something else might happen to her. A lot of them don't have food at home, so they come to school to get free breakfast. And we worry about the children from Friday lunch to Monday morning breakfast because unless grandma is on the scene, they don't have much food. I remember one in particular, um, I asked a parent about her child. She said, well, I hadn't seen him in a couple of days. I know he's in the neighborhood. I know he's staying with friends, but I haven't seen him. And I said, well, we've got a problem. I said, we need to work on that. When I first came here, people looked at me when I told them that I was teaching at Williford, and they had this sympathetic look in their face, like, oh, poor you. And I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Um, and I think that part of it was because they knew the environment, they knew the history of the school, and they knew that things weren't what they could be. I can tell you that here at Williford School, we had the highest suspension rate among all of the elementary schools. I can tell you that we had 33 and a third percent homelessness. I can tell you that our poverty index was 97.9 percent. I can tell you that in terms of teacher retention, that we had a 35% turnover, the highest in the system here. I can tell you that things were not as the teachers wanted, nor was it what the parents wanted or what the students needed. As far as morale, it was low. Um, the teachers were told they couldn't transfer, and so there was a feeling of feeling stuck. I think it was a sense of hopelessness. I don't believe that there was a feeling of hope that things could get better. It was that, Miss Farmer, it can't be done. Most Title I schools are written off. But Sandra Farmer's making sure that that doesn't happen. 
She knows the value of these children, and she knows that we can make a difference in their lives, and she's bound and determined that we're going to do that, that these children are going to have a bright future, and she's going to get anybody involved that she can to make that happen. What needed to be changed at Williford School, one of the things that I think makes a good workplace um, is to focus on a mission. We sat down and we talked about the vision. What do we want Williford School to look like in a year or two years or five years down the road? And we all decided that we wanted a sense of excellence. We wanted this school to be a learning community where all stakeholders played a part in making sure that good things happen to children. I have been at Williford School for 30 years. This Miss Former is the first principal that has ever told us a vision. She, she has clearly told us the vision she has for our school from the very first day she was at Williford. And that's the vision of excellence. And I love our mission statement because it says in part that united with families and communities, meaning that we're not going to work in isolation, that we're going to work together to empower students academically in a safe and orderly environment that necessarily develops character and citizenship. I am a worker. If it takes hard work to reach my goal, I will do it. I am a clean somebody. I know that if I lie down with arms, I can come up with blood. So I will work to keep my mind, my body, and my character clean. Every year we have a slogan. This year it's sailing toward excellence. We've had racing toward excellence and saluting excellence. And the year it was saluting excellence, she would come to the door of every classroom and she would give a salute. And she would have the children salute back. The hands behind their back and the shirts tucked in is a part of a program that we're doing called um, Positive Behavior Support. She is adamant that all male children will have their shirts tucked in. She wants those boys to look nice because when you look nice, you act nice. It makes it a marked difference from home. And I think that's why they feel safe because there is a sense of order here. Children want order. Um, over four years ago, um, Williford received the Impact Model um, Technology Grant from the DPI, the Department of Public Instructions here in North Carolina. And okay, the way this transport Williford is the fact that um, we were able to Don't bring the equipment into the school, but also the collaboration project with teachers, um, getting teachers to get staff development and how to use technology to help you know, educate the children on a daily basis. Um, it also um, transformed the community because a lot of the technology was also put into the Williford Family Resource Center in order to teach classes to um, the students and the parents in the community. How many of the statements show 